Hey guys, this is Camfrey15, back at it with another video for you guys. And again, with a very, uh, very, 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 very much, um, I guess you can say, um, just odd review for uh, Pokemon Journeys. Again, or not odd, rare review of Pokemon Journeys. Now, again, like I said, I'm like, most of the Pokemon Journeys episodes have been going on. I haven't seen a lot. Like, literally, I'm just using the dub just to catch up and watch all the episodes instead of going back. The only thing I'm really looking forward to seeing right now is the outcome of this Masters 8 whole tournament thing going on. Um, and I wish it wasn't like a tournament thing. I wish Ash was individually fighting each and every one of those characters, but I'll see, we'll see who Ash fights. But anyways, we're not here to talk about that. Um, we're here to talk about an episode in the making that, um, my goodness, the games, the freaking Sun and Moon games, freaking, um, they established this storyline and now finally the storyline has a resolution but in the anime the story had a storyline and now finally we have a resolution to the storyline and a very emotionally solid conclusion if not one of the perfect ways to conclude a storyline for um the Lusamine, lily and gladion characters um like it's been like jesus i don't even know how long it's been since they introduced this whole mon storyline back in the video games only to find out to be revealed that when that happens we find out all his memories you know were you know his memories you know wiped away and then he's in pokemon Pal palago um and it looked like they might have done they were going to do the same thing with the uh anime um where they established it in the sun and moon series about looking for moan and you're wondering are they going to go back to this um and stuff like that so yeah and you have to look at it. maybe if this maybe they don't go back to this if this is like ash just journeying the gala region um only um but then again they found him in the crown count crown tundra area so they would have probably went back to it but i'm glad that the pokemon anime st staff and everything they managed to want to continue the storyline and ended off in a very satisfying ending it wasn't anything where it was kind of self-satisfying or how not self-satisfying um it didn't feel anticlimactic or it didn't feel bittersweet um because in the video games that's what they did um in the video games, particularly, I think Ultra Sun and Moon, from what I remember, there was a cutscene in the game where Moan actually shows up in the Aether Foundation and confronts and talks to Lusamine. And Lusamine kind of comes to resolution. He's forgot his memories. I'll just have to let him be what, as is. As much as it pains me to do that, I'm going to have to let him go. And in the games, it didn't feel so damn satisfying. It honestly kind of felt bittersweet slash it kind of honestly made you get pissed off like are you serious bro y you know this episode kind of shits everything that the freaking video game staff did with this storyline they could have had a pretty nice post-game storyline with the moan thing and get that resolution and the video game staff was like yeah no we're not gonna give you that game freak was like yeah we're not gonna give you that we're just gonna give you the hand and just have loose mean except oh he forgot his memories nope in the anime it's completely different um and you have to give credit where credit's due you have to appreciate the anime staff for having a satisfying ending that everybody would love um you know not give the whole typical video game where they realize oh well there's nothing we can do we know he's alive um but he doesn't remember us so at the end of the day it's fine you know we found him and stuff like that no they didn't go that direction they went the direction of him remembering them and everything so let's get into this week's episode um pretty much professor cerise tells ash and the gang that there was a mysterious pokemon seen by a source given to him and it was in the crown tundra area um in the meantime Lily, Lusamine, and Gladion, they're also in this region, and they follow McGirna's location as where McGirna's doing this. And mind you, if you're watching Pokemon Journeys for the first time, if you don't know what the hell the storyline is, you would have to go watch the previous season of Pokemon, which is Pokemon Sun and Moon, and watch all of it to even understand this side plot, unless you played the video games, um, 
you would not know what the heck is this Lily storyline going on anyways um, and stuff like that so um, what happens next is um, Ashley Company they get to the Crown Tundra, Crown Tundra region area of the of, of Galar and they talk to this old guy he's like yeah I think I saw this white Pokemon but then it was I think I saw this gold Pokemon or maybe it could have been both um, so yeah, that's the whole thing. Anyways, they can't go nowhere to find this Pokemon because there's a blizzard going on. Now, don't know why Lucimine, Lily, and Gladian were walking legitimately through a blizzard. He goes to showing how much they want to see Moan, but okay. They end up, you know, making a freaking mobile house, um, and stuff like that, sleeping in it. And the next morning, they end up coming across this house, and lo and behold, the person that opens the door is Moan. Um... And essentially, Lily remembers Moan, just sees Moan, remembers Moan, hugs him. Moan's like, what the heck? Who are you? And he's like, and she's like, it's me, Lily, your daughter and everything. And then when Lucimine and Gladian show up, they're happy that Moan's still alive and everything. But the thing is, just like in the video games, Moan does not remember him because he has amnesia. He lost his memory. Um, so we invite him in the house. It's just, just dark house and everything. And, you know, he kind of says, well, you know, uh, that's very interesting of you um and it's also interesting that uh your daughter's name is lily because that's my daughter's name um and they're shocked they're like wait did this guy get married and have another family or something like that um which would have been like ultimately freaking dark as shit <laughs> well i want to say dark I, I would say unfortunate um but they end up going into his daughter's room and it's not really his daughter it's Nihalego posing as Lily, but to their eyes, um, to Lucimine, Lily, and Gladian's eyes, they see the Nihalego right then and there. Moan doesn't see it. The Nihalego takes the appearance of Lily, and to Moan, it looks like Lily. Um, but to Lily and Lucimine and Gladion, it's a Nihalego. Mind you, it is a shiny Nihalego too, um, which. Um, I think in my Ultra Sun and Moon game, um, which pretty much has all my Pokemon up to this point, I never transferred them to freaking um, Sword and Shield. Um, but I think in my um, Ultra Sun and Moon, um, I think I actually do. If I remember, I think I actually did catch a shiny Nihilego. It's somewhere in my game cartridge on that um, and stuff like that. Um, but it was pretty cool. I, I just find it funny how when we have these games we have these when in the anime when they see a similar pokemon that we've seen before in the past they typically just say eh, just give it the shiny look eh, it's it's different enough um so yeah um and they're kind of shocked now gladian looks like he's going to attack the thing but lucimine holds him back by saying like listen if you attacked it moan could have probably got upset because he thinks that's his daughter he lost his memory and everything he thinks that's lily um so the thing is, they're going to end up looking around. Gladian, he looks around the house and everything, and he sees that pretty much all the mirrors are taken out of any places where there's mirrors. Lily's looking around. She opens up the windows. Also, too, mind you, we do cut over to Pikachu, Ash and company a bit. Pikachu picks up on Lily's scent. They're legitimately, like, a few feet away from the house anyways that Lily um, and Lucimine and Gladian are all in. But... You know, Lily going through these drawers, finds Moan's clothes, sees this mirror, looking within the reflection of the mirror, freaking Ultra Beast, Nihilego, is literally about to pretty much looks like, I guess you can say, attack Lily and kill her. Um, mind you, if this was real world, if this Pokemon were real life and stuff like that, the moment they step into the house, this abandoned house pretty much, um, Nihilego kills them on site because we know Ultra Beast in the games, in the game logic, um, they tone it down in the anime, even though some of them, like, except the the Guzzlord and then the one Ultra Beast we saw in the um, um, anime in front of Moon. Um, we know in the games that the Ultra Boost, the Ultra Beast are, you know, very dangerous creatures and they will attack on sight. If this was real world, Nihilego would have killed them the moment they step inside the fucking door um, and everything. So, um, yeah, it would have been like those horror mystery things. But that's the thing that, again... They tone it down and stuff like that, but whatever. Anyways, Ash comes in, stops the Nihilego from doing that. Um, Gladian comes in, they're shocked that Ash is there, and Ash is like, oh yeah, I was just in the area. But then um, it looks like <coughs> it's losing me talking to Moan. Um, and we're getting to this point where it looks like, okay, we're probably gonna get the same things out of the games where Lucy means just gonna realize there's nothing we can do. He's lost his memory. 
freaking um, Nihilego tries to attack um, Lucimi, Gladion saves her, and then that's when we get the whole rundown of what happened. So pretty much we get the whole rundown of when Moan was taken into the Ultra Wormhole, um, came across the shiny Nihilego. Nihilego saw another Ultra Wormhole open up, took him through that. It ended up taking them to the Gala region in Crown, Tr- in Crown, in Crown Tundra. They end up staying at this house, and then, you know, he just the Nihilego read its memories, Moan's memories, saw that it had a daughter named Lily, and he was also saying Lily and everything um, in the meantime, and essentially made itself look like Lily um, just from a vision effect and everything, which when you think about it, it's actually pretty freaking dark and creepy. Like this dude was pretty much living his life out with an ultra beast thinking it is his human daughter like how scary and creepy is that like and we and again like i said the ultra beasts are probably one of the more creepier sides of pokemon because they're just creatures that we know nothing about and just from the standpoint of what we know about them how terrifying and scary they can be um it's pretty damn scary it's pretty it, it's honest to god terrifying and it's honest to god a creepy as shit um like just imagine this guy living his entire life if lucimi never tried to look for this guy dude would have literally lived with an ultra beast the entire time um mind you at least this nihilego had good reasonings it wasn't like say the one from um, the Sun and Moon anime where it was legitimately trying to abduct Lily and take her back and even abduct and even freaking fuse with Lucy Mean to make her evil and everything um, and stuff like that. Um, this one was kind of pretty cool. And I love the fact that they gave it a little bit of a character and stuff like that because we see the Ultra Beast. We saw the Ultra Beast in Sun and Moon. Yeah, they had characters to them, but it wasn't like... All right, well, I guess I can't. That's kind of a point that pretty much easily refutable because if you watch the series the ultra beast had their own different characters it was kind of the nihilegos the nihilegos you they don't they don't have any facial expressions um so you can't really tell if they have the most ultra beasts don't have faces you can't really tell their expressions anyways um so yeah um but the thing is yeah that's the whole thing and gladian deducts well the moment he looks himself in the mirror he's gonna remember who he is i mean everything um, and they do that. Moan looks him, himself in the mirror and he remembers everything and he identifies his family. Um, the Gladion and Luz and Lily one, they were great ones, but the one that probably broke me the most um, and probably broke a lot of people the most was when Lucimine, when he said Lucimine's name and Lucimine just started bawling her eyes out in freaking tears because now her husband's back. Honestly, that almost made me cry. I'm not going to lie. Um, and like I said, if you know the Sun and Moon storyline, especially Lucimine's storyline, you the reason why it's so damn emotional is because this woman went through a lot of pain and suffering just to find her husband. In the games alone, they even say like this woman was going pretty much mad um, to find her husband. And with the influence of the knee of just coming across a random Ultra Beast, which was the Nihilego in the video games, it amped that up to the freaking max due to its poison toxins and everything. We saw she went crazy in the game. Now, in Ultra Sun and Moon, it's the worser of the original Sun and Moon games. It's harder, um, but they they toned down her mellow, her her craziness she had. Um, now, she, like I said, just in the game, and just like in Ultra Sun and Moon, in the anime, um, when she first comes across in Sun and Moon anime, she's pretty much mellow, but she does, they do have the um, original Sun and Moon storyline where she does get a little bit crazy when that, but she goes kind of crazy when she gets fused with the old, the Nihilego. But at the end of the day, just if you know the Lucimine storyline, you know she's like one of the most tragic characters in the Pokemon franchise, whether it's the games or the anime, one of the most tragic characters regardless. Um, this entire family's tragic regard is tragic regardless. Um, and when I saw Lucy Mean start to ball my eyes out, I'm like, freaking hell, she finally got her husband back. Oh my goodness. I, I honestly, like I said, I feel a uh, happy for you know Lily and Gladium, but it doesn't hit as hard like Lucy Mean does. And I really did love Lucy Mean as a character in the games and the anime. Um, and just seeing her get this resolution is just great it's so emotional it's a great resolution it ends off this storyline that 
many people who played the Sun and Moon games, whether you played Ultra Sun and Moon or regular Sun and Moon, um, you wanted to see this resolution. You wanted to see this storyline, you know, get resolute. And heck, any of the, even the original games, you know, Lily goes on to make the mention, like, yeah, after I get back from Canada, we're going to look for, for our dad and stuff like that. And it's like, we never got that ultimate resolution. And now we do. We got this resolution, and it's just great. Um, and that's pretty much where the episode ends off. Um, oh, yeah, it looks like the Ultra Boost is, or the Neo Lego is going to go away, but Lily's like, no, join us, join our family and everything. And again, another full circle moment of the fact that a Neo Lego almost broke their entire family up and tried to attack them and harm them. And the fact now that they're welcoming a Neo Lego into their family is just straight up full circle. Like, my God, man. You know, after all the trauma and all the pain and suffering Aniha Lego gave this family, um, whether you look at it, the anime or the games, the fact that now they catch Aniha Lego and it's added to their family, <laughs> just full circle. You can't make this up. Um, but it was great. It was great. It was a great episode. Definitely a perfect Pokemon episode. I enjoyed this episode. And I'm just glad that finally we got a resolution to this Lily storyline, this eighth, this Lily Lusamine Gladion storyline when it comes to Mon. Um, and it was the satisfying ending that a lot of people wanted to see. And it's great that we got that finally. Um, next week's episode looks like they're returning back to the Alola region. Lily's going to see Mallow and the others again. Mon's going to return to the Alola region. Looks like there's going to be a battle royale and everything. I'm not going to review next week's episode because why? I mean, it's just going to probably be a nice heartfelt episode and stuff like that. So, yeah, but um, this episode was good. So, anyways, guys, if you guys like the video, leave a like. Put in the comment section your thoughts on this week's episode of Pokemon Journeys, as well as hit the subscribe button if you want to get more, uh, I guess, Pokemon content or any other anime content I upload to the channel. Other than that, guys, I'm going to get out of here. Hopefully, you guys have a great rest of your day. And I'm going to see you in the next video. Until then, guys, catch you guys later. Peace.